Now, we have taken out a fake alert. Yes, we have. Fake radars out and about. Our focus today on ENCA is counterfeit goods, counterfeit products, and the infrastructure around them. Uh, we all know how easy it is to uh, get hold of a counterfeit product, but the question I suppose you have to ask is, how do you know the difference? Well, police say they do, and they're expected to make a massive bust later this morning. Uh, police recently confiscating counterfeit goods worth over 75 million rand. That was just during one raid. It's a massive market, isn't a it? A huge, huge market, not small figures. Um, our reporter, Pule Literati Jones, uh, joins us now. He's out and about uh, with the authorities as they embark on the raids uh, in various parts of, of town. And you'll remember um, the story where kids actually died from mm. consuming um, counterfeit sweets, you know, biscuits. We've, we've had and heard of, of those stories. Pule, where exactly are you now? There is an operation uh, that's currently uh, running. Yes. A very good morning. I actually it did cover the story where uh, two, you know, young children died as a result of eating biscuits from a spaza shop as well. And of course, that was the word on the ground when you arrived in that community. Quite a sad, a tragic incident that took place there. And of course, we know that Joburg is notoriously known for some of the um, counter counter good uh, uh, operations that are taking place. Uh, we seemingly now have been told as well by SAPS that the West Rand as well is becoming a uh, quite um, popular where we are seeing some of these operations being arrived as well. But today we are in Twani where we know that uh, the police officials will be making a massive bust as well. Uh, just a few days ago uh, there were counterfeit goods that were confiscated in the western area of Pretoria to the street value of about 13 Point seven million rand. Now you can imagine, really, that is quite, um, you know, a massive, uh, a massive value there, which police made on. But of course, you also have the illicit cigarettes um, industry as well and we know that uh, this uh, industry has robbed South Africa of about more than 72 billion in tax revenue over just the past three years so that goes to show you how really if um, police continue to pounce on these operations unabated the kind of um, you know rescuing they can do to the country's economy as well but of course uh, I'm joined by the business of, against the crime of South Africa as well uh, Mr. Fulun, who uh, speaks to me this morning. Uh, Mr. Fulun, thank you very much for uh, joining us at ENCA this morning. Firstly, maybe we'd like to start off with how big of a threat is the counterfeit good market to the country's economy? Well, there's figures being mentioned, as you refer, uh, 27 or 72 billion in three years, so that's 27 billion in tax revenue per year. Obviously, you'd have to have a look at how exactly that's determined. Um, I assume that it is measured by declining tax collection um, <clears throat> in reference to previous years. Let's also take into account that in terms of the full uh, revenue uh, collected by the fiscus, it's just 1.6%. So in terms of uh, the loss, it's a big lot, a lot of money. Uh, and obviously, you could have built a lot of houses with that or could have built schools with that. So in terms of what that is, it, uh, it's really a, um, a big knock. Um, but there's more than that. Uh, that when you, it, it eats away at legitimate business. And that's what our concern is. Um, I mean, standing for, for business um, and protecting business against, um, against a crime that, that, that really harms us and makes it difficult to make a living. I guess one would also ask, where is the problem? How are the uh, counterfeit goods or products entering the country? Is this again as a result of the porous borders as well? That's correct. Um, it is fairly difficult for uh, for the the volume that gets into the borders, and I'm talking of that as land borders. See, um, you really can only act. Um, you only have the resources to act if you have some form of tip off and some form of intelligence was to, to go through every uh, and open every container it's a, it's an arduous task um, and quite often you I mean, in, in terms of the documentation you would look at what is presented and you would only uh, open up a container if you have information because you don't have resources 
and we can't uh, can't have the delay of goods into in coming into the country by open up, opening up every container. So yeah, it is. It's that's that's a that's a limitation in terms of resources available. What can community do, communities do rather to protect themselves? Because um, my colleagues and I speak about a recent uh, incident where two kids died as a result of having allegedly eaten biscuits they bought from the spaza shop. What can communities do to alert themselves to these kind of operations that are taking place, which may pose a danger to their areas as well? As you've rightfully said, uh, the police apparently have a means of identifying illicit product. Um, if there's information like that made available to the public, the public can defend themselves. I mean, it's all about knowledge. To some extent, um, in terms of cigarette trade, there was notions of looking at the price. Now, obviously, uh, the moment you, people start shying away from lower priced products, um, the illicit trade market will just up the product to fit what you're looking for. So um, it, it is about education. It's fairly difficult uh, for, for a member of the public to trace where product has come from. Uh, there are a technology implementation in terms of cigarettes where, where the, the individual packets are marked. And obviously, it depends on whether the buyer is willing to, to look at the barcode to protect him or herself. And there's, um, the other part of it is you have to have some means of uh, a cell phone. Now, obviously, people are saying, oh, everyone have a cell phone. But uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult one um, to actually use. But that's the kind of thing that you, that you need uh, for a member of the public to be able to trace where it comes from. At the same time, it is, mm. uh, the, the, in terms of the, the retail trade, there's trusted marks, trusted places. And there might be a, a, an issue uh, with, with small market. I mean, it is, it is convenient having a little spaza shop in your area. And um, I mean, the difficulty of transport and the cost of it, as well as um, uh, 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 load shedding that, that makes it dangerous to travel, you would go to your local spaza. And it's all about trust. Um, I mean, but it, yeah, it is difficult for, for a member of the public to, to verify that the product is legitimate. legitimate. Uh, I mean, we have excellent products coming in from the Middle East um, that, that's really comparable. Um, and uh, because of the, of the labor and maybe other factors, it is, uh, is cost effective as well. Um, and uh, the, the unfortunate thing is that, that out of the, the packets that, that is in that same shop, all the rest might be fine, but there's something specific that went wrong with these packets that the, that the children consumed. And, and it's, a, it's a very heart-wrenching right. to, to lose someone to something as simple. Yeah, Jeff, definitely. Just in brief, uh, lastly, what should be the solution uh, to target and, of course, uh, fight the counterfeit goods um, um, market operation um, at large as well? I mean, it's a definite. Um, it's a very, very organised business in terms of uh, of so, like most of it, we say follow the money. And so there's there's a few things that uh, that illicit trade and, and normal trade has in common. And the one is money. Obviously, there's transactions going through. Um, and the second one is logistics. So there's somewhere there's a storage area. Um, as we've seen with these big busts, uh, it was because of intelligence, intelligence being gathered. And that showed that there's a warehouse somewhere with, with goods that's not traceable and then investigating it further and finding out what is going on in and out. Um, and I mean, obviously, that's a bit of um, uh, intensive investigation because you don't want to raid a place at the wrong time. Um, but it, they are successes because we, we've definitely got the talent um, and, and the knowledge uh, to, to construct these kind of information and get to the right place at the right time. Mr. Falun, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Of course, that's uh, Rulof Falun from Business Against Crime South Africa. Well, of course, uh, Gareth and Tommy will be giving you an update uh, throughout the course of the day uh, once we uh, have successfully, with the um, uh, joint operation that's been coordinated by the SAPS, uh, pounced on the uh, counterfeit goods operations uh, that we are told arrive from this particular area we're in. And we will be joining the police, of course, this morning.
Yeah, looking forward to that. Pull it, Sweetie Jones, as we stay on what is our focus for today, counterfeit goods, how it's affecting the economy, how do you identify a counterfeit good. Uh, but also, in a couple of moments from now, we're actually going to hear from the National Consumer Commission, uh, their head of complaints and investigations. And I suppose some of the questions that have to be asked is how regulated are what we call spaza shops, uh, how well monitored are those. But I suppose uh, you could also ask the question, what is actually considered a counterfeit good before we start using it as a as, as a broad brush stroke to anything that's not an original yeah. is it because of the way it was imported is it not uh, uh, declared through SARS what actually makes it a counterfeit good might be a question I want to put to them because at times there might actually be a, a fine line yeah. you know maybe if it's a knockoff of an already existing brand or passing off as something that, mm. that you're not um, utilizing the, the trademark or the intellectual property of an already existing brand in passing off um, you know so I think that's a really good question a good yeah. starting point what exactly is actually a counterfeit good yeah.